Thanks, Chris. Hi, I'm Cassia Kopecki with Edmonton Global, and we are again live here on day two at the Edmonton Global stage inside of North America's largest hydrogen convention, the Canadian Hydrogen Convention. I'm here with Jorg, Terry, and Corey. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Yes, hi there. Thanks for having me, Cassia. My name is Jörg Wimbert. I'm the head of Canadian Energy Supply and Infrastructure for Nikola. Been with Nikola for a little over two years. Been a wild, crazy, and exciting ride. Um, a little bit about Nikola. We were founded in 2015. Um, you know, we, we produce battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell trucks. Um, we have a, our, we are headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, we have a manufacturing facility in Coolidge and one in Ulm. And yeah, I'm just really excited to be here, really stoked. Terry? Hi, thanks for having me here. Kezia Terry Johnson, Alberta Motor Transport Association. We're representing the commercial transportation industry and carriers in the industry. Amazing. Corey Schumacher, Head of Business Development for uh, Heizon Motors. We are based out of uh, Chicago, uh, also offices in Detroit and in New York. I'm personally based in uh, Los Angeles, uh, a little sad from last night. Um, it's been an exciting run for Heizon in the past few years. It's been with Heizon for three years. We started in 2020. Um, I like Nikola, Class 8 uh, hydrogen fuel cell trucks. Uh, and it's been a pleasure to, to be a part of all this happening in Edmonton. Awesome. Well, I think all of you have something very much in common. Uh, back in February, I believe it was February 10th, AMTA officially launched their demonstration projects. Terry, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? It's pretty exciting. It is amazing. So AMTA is honored to work with both Hyzon, Nikola. We're also working with Hydra. And what we're doing is we're introducing the commercial carriers to these technologies, allowing them to trial them in their business operations. And then from there, the trials are giving us data on how the vehicles operate in Canadian winters with Canadian weights and Canadian ranges. Awesome. And what are your two's roles in it for Hyzon and Nikola? I know I saw some of your technology at the demonstration. Can you tell us a little bit about, about a little bit more about it? Jorg, I'll start with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're super excited to bring our hydrogen fuel cell truck up. Um, we're intending to bring ours up for the roadshow in September. It's going to be there for about a year. You know, trialing like 60 carriers, I think. We have trialing our truck. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fuel cell truck. We're intending to launch it, putting it in commercial operations by um, the end of this year. Um, it's, a, it's a 6x2 truck. Um, it has a range of up to 800 kilometers. It has 70 kilograms of hydrogen. Um, it holds uh, 700 bar or 10,000 psi pressure. It's a cab over design. Lots of visibility on the truck, um, you know, so we're really excited to bring this truck forward to this market. And I think this 5,000 vehicle challenge that we had, that you guys shared, I think it's going to be really cool to, to be part of all of this. Thank you. I'm sure Nicola is very on board with having 5,000 vehicles on roads in Western Canada. Yes. Corey, yes, do, you have, do you have anything to add? Yeah, of course. So. Uh, we're also really excited about the fleets that are going to be testing our truck. So far, we've done uh, KEG and Bison and uh, Highway 9 and currently with New Way. Uh, so our truck's been running since the end of January. Uh, I think we're up to nearly 4,000 kilometers traveled or uh, something like that uh, on commercial with commercial loads on Canadian roads, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, this will carry through uh, into the summer, uh, likely through the end of July. And so you know, it's a great opportunity for us to get that feedback. Uh, and, and it was a great opportunity in the winter uh, to really put it through the paces of uh, cold weather testing uh, that you can really only do up here uh, in Edmonton where it gets you know up down to minus 40. So for any fr uh, fleet operators that are interested in demonstrating this, is there a process or are companies still able to get into this program? Absolutely. We've got 60 carriers currently signed up for the hydrogen vehicle demonstrations. But if you go to the AMTA website under research and innovation, we have uh, an application that you can fill in and then we will get back to you. Awesome. Um, Okay, um, so I also am really curious as far as the fuel cell technology. Um, I know lots of people here at the convention probably know a lot about hydrogen and fuel cell and dual fuel technology. However, what about our listeners and our viewers online? Um, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between fuel cell, electric, hydrogen powered, um, and where your technology fits into that? Yeah. 
absolutely. Um, so. So yeah, at Nikola we have a battery electric truck that is actually has been in commercial production for over a year now, and you know we're excited to have that on the road. Um, and fuel cell truck, like I said, we're launching later on. But the difference is they're both electric trucks, right? So they both basically have an, an e axle and an electric drivetrain that that moves the truck, propels the truck forward. Um, the difference is that for the fuel cell truck, the hydrogen fuel cell truck, you have hydrogen fuel in there and then that produces the electrons that then get fed to a battery and then that battery drives the e axle. So there's still a battery in between but much smaller batteries, right? And, and so they, are, they both have instantaneous you know, power and um, you know, the feedback is that they're very, people are very excited to drive them. They're very smooth, they're very silent and I mean, the, the big advantage is they only have water coming out the back, right? It's steam, water, vapor, right? And that's, that's the big one. So they're zero emission vehicles. You avoid about 106 tons of CO2 per year with them. So again, imagine 5,000 vehicles and what that could do. Anything to add, Corey? Sure. No, I think you did well. So it's exciting to see the zero emission technology uh, on the roads. And, and again, as as George mentioned, it's just water vapor that comes out of the the, the tailpipe. Uh, and the, the key advantage for a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is you're carrying your energy in the form of hydrogen molecules, which is the lightest element in the universe. And so when you compare that to batteries, where they have to carry their energy in you know a solid form in, in the batteries and lithium ion and other chemistries, as you add more energy, you add significantly more weight. Whereas with hydrogen, you know, when you fill up your tank and you're adding you know, 50 or 70 kilograms of hydrogen, it's, it's really not the, the hydrogen itself that weighs anything more than 50 or 70 kilograms of added weight. There's some tank weight and some structural weight, but that, does, that pales in comparison with the amount of weight that you would need to go the same distance with a battery electric. So therefore, you know, we're going you know, uh, 300 miles or 500 miles range uh, with, with fuel cell uh, versus battery electric, which really, uh, depending on the manufacturer, can go anywhere from 150 miles you know, up to 300. Um, but it's, it's, it's really heavy. Uh, and the fact that you lose payload with those heavier uh, battery electric truck weights because you can only carry a certain total amount between the tractor and the trailer and the payload. So when your tractor weighs thousands of pounds more than it should, then you're losing thousands of pounds or you know tons of kilos from your payload. So that's, that's one of the biggest advantages of the fuel cell vehicle over the battery electric vehicle is the payload increase. So essentially you're saying for these vehicles when the fuel cells or the way that we're carrying the fuel is lighter, then that means that we can carry more product, exactly. do less trips, save more fuel, save more money, right? Yeah, and, and the big advantage as well, if I could jump in, is um, is that the refueling time, I mean, battery electric truck takes a lot longer to refuel, right, so to speak, or to charge. Uh, with, a, with a hydrogen truck, it takes less than, we're aiming for less than 20 minutes to have it to have it refueled. And you have mobile refueling stations as well that we're offering on the Nikola Energy side, you know, which is basically a refueling station on wheels, so you can deploy them in remote areas as well, remote communities and all of that. And I think the big thing as well is the range, as, as Corey was saying, you know, you can have like our truck up to 800 kilometers, but overall, that's that's where you can start connecting different cities, right? Calgary, Edmonton, Lethbridge, Madison Head, whatever. You can create those corridors, whereas battery electric are more for short haul regional applications, return to base. Okay, that's awesome. So, Terry, I was just wondering as well your input as far as AMTA, I know you have members all over Alberta, does that go further through Western Canada or is it just Alberta? Well, our members are based in Alberta, but a lot of our carrier members are international members. So they're the Bisons, the Trimax, they're all across Canada and into the States. GFL and other company, they're across North America. So our, the Lord trials are focused here in Alberta to start. Um, as we have more resources and more energy, we'll expand it out across Alberta and then across Canada. And what kind of feedback have you heard from your members so far with the demonstration? I know it's still very new, but um, I imagine it's also very good feedback. But can you be more specific about what people are saying and what people's outlook is about this? When we started with the hydrogen vehicle demonstrations, there was very little information about fuel cell electric vehicles, and it's still something that is limited, is the data, and understanding not only what the brochures say the vehicles are going to do, but what the vehicles actually do. So now our carriers are finding out how these 
vehicles operate in their loads. They're finding out how they're going to have to do transitions to their current business operations in order to incorporate these vehicles and how they're going to be moving forward with a zero emissions economy. And what are some of the problems or challenges that you find maybe we might run into in this transition? Fueling. Fuel. Fuel, definitely. Fuel supply. Yeah. That's the number one. Cost. Uh, fuel would be the number two. Um, and then there's simple things like even training for first responders, training for mechanics to be able to support the vehicles, um, mechanic programs through Nate with Agatha, who is just here, making sure we have those services for industry built out, not only the actual vehicles and the hydrogen supply and the regulations. So it's a whole economy we're building. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of moving parts. Um, Agatha is actually going to be joining us in a few moments too, so we'll get to touch a little bit more on on the educational training aspect. George, do you have anything to add? Sorry, Jorg. <laughs> it's all good. It's a German name. It's a tough one. It even has two dots on the O. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so what I want to add there is, you know, the whole regulation and permitting and, I, you know, I've talked to a lot of people already about this. It's really important to have like a, a framework for this so that it makes it a lot easier for our, you know, Nikola uh, products like the mobile fuelers that we can bring them to, to the areas and, and we have the fire marshals in different, say in Calgary and Edmond, that they're all saying the same thing. They all have the same regulations and, and, and you know, the same rules in place. So would be really helpful if we could push something like this forward, right? And because, like Corey was saying, fuel is a little bit, you know, the one that we need to figure out now. And we're putting together a portfolio. I don't know if you saw the announcement, but of over 300 tons of hydrogen supply plus 60 stations across North America. So. We want to bring the chicken and the egg together, right, and to make this possible. But it needs to be all of us here to, to make this possible. I've definitely heard that chicken and the egg anecdote quite a few times when well, we're talking about hydrogen. What, what Terry whispered in my ear is that, you know, it's, it's really like a, a roast chicken omelet because we're going to bring the trucks and the fuel together. Uh, I don't know if you'd ever want to eat that, but, it's just, but <laughs> you have to combine both because they're, they're codependent on each other. And so what we're seeing is deployment of the vehicles and infrastructure planned for this, the simultaneous deployment. Well, great. Thank you all so much for joining us at the Edmonton Global Stage today. It was really nice getting to know all of you, learning about the projects and what you're doing to really accelerate the transition of commercial transportation in Western Canada to hydrogen. So thank you again. Is there anything you'd like to leave the audience with? Take a look at our website. You'll be able to see the trucks and you'll be able to track what's going on with the trials. And I also wanna, would like to leave with, uh, first of all, saying thank you, everybody. I think it takes all of us again to make this possible. So a shout out to Edmund Global for doing such great work. A shout out to the, to the Transition Accelerator. You know, they're doing fantastic work. David Lozell, Mark Leo Wilson, you know, Dinara and team, the AIMTA, fantastic job. And a separate applause to the AMTA because they are actually walking the talk and they have just purchased our battery electric truck and our, and our fuel cell truck. Um, so one each. And so we are very excited to see that on the road right now as we speak. It is really exciting. Well, thank you again so much.